Anchor, and we're gonna have dinner at Anchor. <laughs> the Anchor Bowl is up. <laughs> well, um, it's two hours after sunset, and Beverly and I were playing uh, Scrabble, but it was getting pretty bad on our Scrabble when Beverly has used an N sideways <laughs> just to spell the word mizzen. <laughs> I thought it was rather inventive myself, but regardless. But um, what's happening at the moment is our fridge um, is starting to fail. Now, the reason it's starting to fail is the voltage from the batteries has to be quite high for our fridge it's very very sensitive to voltage drops now all we've done to get the fridge working is we've had to actually turn the anchor alarm off um, and that was enough to get the fridge working but we're only two hours after sunset um, you know what's it going to be like during the night we've got quite a few hours before light you know, we've already had to turn the anchor alarm off. We might have to turn something else off just to keep the fridge going. So even though I'm ready and dressed for bed, I'm going to have to get my kit on uh, because we've decided that we're going to pull the anchor and go in. You know, we had hoped to anchor the whole night, but, you know... I'm afraid to say our batteries are starting to fail. And um, They're five or six years old now. They are five or six years old. They're quite a good age now. Um, you know, so it's going to be our night at anchor is being cut short, I'm afraid. But at least we're not that far from the marina. Well, at least that's one little worry uh, averted. Um, the engine has started, but the starter battery and the house batteries are two different battery sets and the house battery is the one that's causing the issue, not the starter battery. The starter battery is still within range, but the house battery, we've just had a look, they're five years old, so, you know, three years is typical for a lead acid. So we've not done too badly with five. shorter uh, adventure than we planned but we're in but one of the things that's really really useful is to have a wee headlight on a stick like this one 600 lumens which is basically a car's headlight but for finding boys and things like that it was just super super useful um, but yeah lots and lots of light well as you know we were at anchor and um, we've had a look at just how far our voltage went down and it went down to 12.43 volts which considering you're only talking about two hours after sunset is quite low really 
So clearly our batteries are toast. If they're not holding charge through the night, then as far as we're concerned, they're of no use to us whatsoever because we love being at anchor. So we're going to have to replace them. Now, quite a few things that we can consider is physical size. There's no point in getting a battery that's going to be a lot bigger than what we have now because we've not got that much room in the area. Other things to consider is where the terminals are. I'm no intention of rewiring this boat. Um, so here they are in Honda here. And these are our batteries. And um, what we have at the moment is uh, L5077 battery. And we can still get those. So for minimum amount of disruption, we can get two of these batteries and just drop in and replace. And that's what we've decided to do. The only problem we have with that is we are in Northern Ireland and getting these things delivered is going to be a difficult job. So as Gainer says, physical size is one consideration of the new battery. Um, another consideration is the technology you're already surrounded with. Our little Victron charger that does our solar panels uh, does have an option for lithium, so that is a thing, and it also has options for gel and AGM and wet batteries, lead acid. So that's all well and good. We can do any of that with um, the little Victron charger. But the Sterling charger, which is our shore power charger, it connects us to shore power and keeps the batteries charged up, is an older charger. They are four, five hundred pounds to buy new, and it only does AGM and seal lead acid and wet batteries. That's it, that's the choices. So unless we're prepared to shell out for a new Sterling charger or something similar, we have to deal with Sure power charging. Um, in terms of the alternator, we may need a new regulator for it. We certainly need some sort of protection mechanism because it's known that when lithiums just cut off the uh, battery management systems, they can blow your um, alternator to kingdom come. So we're not that keen on that. Uh, the other big showstopper for lithium is just the sheer price. We've looked them up this morning for the battery replacements we need, and depending who we buy it off, the replacement price is anywhere between £700 and £1,300. Whereas for the lead acid ones we're putting in, it's 400. So 400, plus we don't have to replace the smart charger. We don't have to do any upgrade work. We don't have to change the terminals type. Um, we don't have to recable the boat and we don't have to do anything with the regulator. We just want a drop in replacement. And if we could get a drop in replacement, we'd have it in a heartbeat. The problem is that there's various regulations and any battery weighing more than 28 kilograms cannot be shipped to Northern Ireland, which makes me wonder how Northern Ireland gets by with batteries in their trucks and things. Do they drive them all to the main? I've got no idea. Don't know. But we've contacted a local battery company, Wells and Bangor, and we're waiting for them to come back to us and see if they can get their hands on these batteries. Otherwise, we may have to sail the boat over to the mainland and get the batteries delivered to us. We don't know yet. It's a bit of a bummer. We had hoped to order these up and get them all in, but at the minute, it doesn't look like it's happening. We're having a coffee break before we start, and we just noticed the fridge making odd noises, and um, so we checked the voltage on the uh, voltage indicator. And um, because I've been using the laptop on the DC system here, there's enough power being drawn from the batteries and they are so weak that they can't hold the charge but when the fridge switches on it drops to 12 volts or even a little lower than 12 volts I saw it earlier on the screen reading about 11 and a half which is absolutely dreadful I think the only reason it's not reading 11 and a half now is we've got strong sunshine on the solar panels but even with the solar panels going the shore power going the batteries can't even hold 12 volts so um I don't think it's the fridge that's causing this well the fridge is indirectly causing it because fridges have a high draw but um I think the batteries are just buggered. So at the end of the day, we're going to put these new ones in. If it turns out the fridge is knackered, it's a different problem, but at least we'll have new batteries. But I think this will sort out the fridge problem for now. Fingers crossed. So uh, before we actually purchase these batteries, we tested them in wells um, to make sure that they were at a re good resting voltage. If the batteries are not at a good resting uh, voltage, don't buy them. Because if they're knackered before you start, you're wasting your money. 
So a good resting voltage is anywhere in around 12.7. Anything below 12 is just scrap. Okay, so um, we did say that we were having trouble sourcing the uh, Bosch batteries here in Northern Ireland, and it's because apparently for some reason Bosch don't sell their batteries in Northern Ireland, whether it's a Brexit thing or some sort of paperwork thing or just a, a regional marketing thing. Who knows? Anyway, the upshot is that Barta will sell us a virtually identical battery. Um, same size, actually bigger capacity. These are 180 amp hours, the Varta is 190. So we're getting an extra 10 amp hours. Fortunately, it doesn't come free. And these batteries are a little bit more expensive. I think they're like 20 or 30 pounds more expensive per battery. So the bill of 400 pounds has now got up to 500 pounds. And um, the other thing we've decided to do is we noticed that our starter battery is three months younger than these ones, and these are going. So what do you reckon? The starter's a devil to get out because of where it is. It sits right in front of this house battery. But if we're taking this house battery out, it's easy to change the starter. So we went and shelled out for a starter battery too, and we'll be changing that one today. So we'll be getting a new starter battery and new house batteries all today. And hopefully we'll be good for years to come. One other thing about the Varda batteries is they are clearly superior to the Bosch ones because they are obviously meant for sailboats because they have a sailboat picture on them. The Bosch don't, they just have a like, big blue sticker on top. So we've obviously gone for far superior batteries and obviously intended for sailboat use. <laughs> some basic internet research earlier and what it says is take the negative off first then the positive when you're doing putting the batteries in put the positive on first then the negative research okay. Right, that I could have done without that that was one awkward battery to fit but well, it's in and if it was awkward to fit with the big one out, think how awkward it would be with the big one in. But now we can put the big ones in. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you might be wondering what I'm doing. Uh, all I'm doing is removing the lead oxide. And as you can see, I've only done one terminal and my fingers are already black. Right, so we're going to reconnect. So reconnect, positive first, then negative. Well, they're all installed, but we did have a slight panic <laughs> and we had all the, t the wiring off and we were looking at it and thinking, which one's the house battery? <laughs> but we just did a continuity test between the two house batteries uh, on the positive wire um, and then that sorted it out. And since we haven't blown the boat to Kingdom Come, we must have it right. Okay, only one more test to do, really. And what's that, Bev? Start the engine. Starting. I think that was a success. Hooray! Um, this is the battery we've just removed and we've tested both batteries. Um, the battery that was under my bunk is still um, good but Beverly's uh, voltage on hers is well down and um, when you look at the chart of how good it is it was down at 10% <laughs> so no wonder we were having trouble 
because we had completely dead battery. Well, 11.3 is just uh, above the standing voltage on the bottom of our card, which is 11.1. Uh, <laughs> 11.31 I think it was. It was 11.31. 11.31 which is 10% charge left in the battery. The next one down from that is dead. But they're both in the red zone which means this battery will damage the other battery eventually. So yeah we did have problems. What about the starter battery Bev? Starter battery seemed to be okay. It was still reading over 12 volts but why not take the opportunity to change them? 